Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and this will be the only broadcast for this week because Thursday is Thanksgiving and I'll come back to that. Just a couple of things that I wanted to remind you about. First of all is uh, the conference videos are about ready for viewing so if you wish you'd been here it is the next best thing to being here although I would argue that being here with the food and everything is a much better idea so plan to come next year for sure but anyway conference videos you can be a subscriber to those and watch them online we even recorded the breakout sessions um, keep those inquiries about nutrition educator coming this is our alternative to dietetics for the person who's saying I would go to dietetics school if I wasn't so uh, not enamored with the curriculum and the USDA food guidelines and etc etc so um, happy to talk to you about it send you the course catalog it's a wonderful program that you can do from anywhere because the classes are offered via live and interactive teleconference um, holiday cookies we're starting to ship those right after Thanksgiving 1995 including shipping to any place in the continental United States and we can talk about outside the continental United States but 1995 is the price if we ship them inside the United States so those are the announcements for now so um, the topic I've chosen today um, again was inspired by as so often these are by an inquiry from somebody who said that she had visited a doctor and was encouraged to get a 3d mammogram which is supposed to be better and the question was is it better all right I'm going to attempt to answer that question here a 3D mammogram is an image that combines several breast x-rays in order to create a three-dimensional picture of the breast. It was approved by the FDA in 2011 and advocates say it's better than normal mammograms, but this is a pretty low bar because traditional mammograms don't decrease the risk of dying of breast cancer and the risk of harm is significantly greater than the chance of benefit. And I thought I would just include a couple of research studies to give you an idea of what I'm talking about in case this concept is new to you. A Cochrane review showed that for every 2,000 women screened um, uh, with traditional mammography for 10 years, only one would benefit and 10 women would be harmed from overdiagnosis and overtreatment. So you might wonder what this overdiagnosis and overtreatment means. It means that you really don't have cancer, you have a small mass such as ductal carcinoma in situ or lobular carcinoma in situ, which are risk factors for cancer but not cancer. But um, the stress, the biopsies, and you heard my uh, video clip a couple weeks ago about or last week about um, biopsies and the risks associated with them and the treatment surgeries all of this is ridiculous if you really don't have cancer another study showed that for every thousand women screened for 10 years as many as 670 would have a false positive as many as 14 would be overdiagnosed and overtreated and the benefit would range from 0.3 to 3.2 women who would avoid death now to translate this to statistics that are real easy to understand the risk of harm is between 5 and 15 times the chance of benefit and um, that's something that women should know before they sign on well at this time there's no evidence showing that 3d is actually better than this um, in fact according to the u.s preventive services task force quote 3d mammography is a promising new technology for detecting breast cancer however it is not clear whether this technology will result in improved health quality of life or fewer deaths among women screened the task force concluded that it could not make a recommendation for or against the use of 3d mammography and strongly encouraged additional research indeed more research is needed if you look at the fda approval for 3d mammography it was based on very scant evidence that the technology resulted in finding more breast cancer not evidence that it actually improves survival if 3d is indeed more sensitive which is what people are saying the risk of overdiagnosis and over treatment is even worse than um, it would be with regular mammography some studies show that the biopsy rate is increased with 3d mammograms and a 2016 study showed that women who were screened with 3d technology had more false positives that's not a good thing in fact um, I know that there's a uh, an article in the library about this which shows that uh, which reported that women who are diagnosed with a false positive have just as much stress associated with dealing with that as women who actually are diagnosed with breast cancer well not all research even confirms that 3d is effective for finding more tumors the thing that's supposed to be so good for a study of 29,000 women showed that the new technology was no more effective at detecting tumors than 2d technology 
In spite of the questionable value of 3D, the FDA reports it's widely used. There are, as of January of this, of uh, 2018, there were 3,915 imaging centers that were offering 3D, and that was a 30% increase from the previous year in January of 2017. Risks are not limited to false positives and increased biopsy rates. Some centers um, have systems that require both 2D and 3D images, which means a considerably larger amount of radiation exposure, which I think everybody understands is a problem. The reason for using both is that clusters of calcium deposits are easier to see in a 2D image. Even though 3D appears to increase risks without any corresponding benefits, um, 3D mammograms cost an average of $50 more per image, and um, that's according to one analysis. In some parts of the country, it's even more. A growing number of states are passing laws mandating that insurance companies pay the extra fee, and this just further burdens a healthcare system that is already plagued with high costs and very low efficacy rates. Well, all of this enthusiasm for 3D appears to be generated by aggressive marketing. It certainly isn't because it's better. We don't, maybe it'll prove to be better in some future test, but right now we don't have any evidence showing that. Well, to give you an idea of the aggressive marketing, during the last six years, manufacturers of 3D imaging equipment have paid over $240 million to doctors and teaching hospitals, about half of which was allocated to research and the balance of which was paid for speaking fees and consulting and travel expenses and meals and entertainment. And that's according to the Medicare Open Payments Database, which is a veritable treasure trove of information if you have the time to sort through it and see who's getting paid for what by whom. Money buys advocates, as you might imagine. Dr. Leanne Philpotts is Chief of Breast Cancer Imaging at Yale School of Medicine, and she advocated for the passage of a bill in Connecticut that would mandate insurance coverage uh, for the mammograms. Her letter of support did not disclose that she had been paid $13,500 by Hologic, a manufacturer of 3D systems. Another enthusiast, Dr. Linda Greer, has received over $305,000 from makers of mammography machines, with most of it related to 3D, 3D mammograms. When I say most of it, $222,000 of it. Dr. Stephen Rose is another outspoken paid spokesperson. He testified on behalf of 3D Systems in front of an FDA advisory panel. He's been paid $317,000 from companies that make mammography products with only $38,000 of this allocated to research and the rest of it in the form of consulting fees and meals and things of that nature. A 2014 paper touting the benefits of 3D mammograms had 14 authors, including Dr. Rose. The paper only reported that 3D increased the cancer detection rate and the conclusion was, quote, further studies are needed to assess the relationship to clinical outcomes. In other words, the thing that should count when you're looking at cancer is that people don't die of cancer or they live longer or they have a better quality of life or something. The only thing that anybody is able to point to, and by the way, these authors collectively received over a million dollars from manufacturers of 3D equipment during the previous six years, and the million dollars could only buy um, the acknowledgement that there's more detection of tumors, not that people live longer or that there's any long-term benefit at all. Well, in addition to paying doctors to promote 3D, the industry is using celebrity endorsements, very common with drugs and devices. Cheryl Crow is a best cancer, breast cancer survivor who openly endorses 3D. I looked at um, one of the websites from a company that makes this stuff and her picture is there with a testimonial. Makers of 3D systems have gotten a great return on their very large investment. In spite of its, pers of its limitations, the perception is that 3D mammograms are so fabulous, they must be made available to everybody. In fact, when rural hospitals are unable to afford the new technology, fundraising campaigns are instituted so that, um, so that the hospital can pay for them because everybody should have access to this. The fact remains, however, that 3D has not been proven to improve outcomes or save lives. A 2018 analysis showed that for every thousand women screened, one extra breast tumor is detected. One of the researchers, Warda McCaskill Stevens, acknowledges that no one knows whether or not the technology actually saves lives. She's leading a study which will include 165,000 women to determine the risks and benefits of 3D mammograms. In other words, the technology so far looks like it's useless and harmful. Nobody knows definitively at this time. 
But once again, the government, the medical profession, state legislators, celebrities, and everybody else has jumped all in, wholeheartedly adopting a new practice with more evidence that it will harm more patients than it will help. Most likely, billions of dollars will be spent, thousands of patients will be hurt or killed until the inevitable public acknowledgement that this is not a good idea. And if history repeats itself, and it almost always does, 3D will still continue to be used widely. But now you've been warned. The answer is provided to the person who asked about it. And um, I would uh, really give some careful consideration as to whether or not this is a good option. So with that, that's all for today. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, the little bell if you click on that, you'll be notified when new videos are posted every week. Um, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I won't be putting out a broadcast on Thanksgiving Day, but have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And please do listen to my little voice in the back of your head saying, gosh, you think that's such a good idea to eat or drink? Because you can have a wonderful time with family and friends and still eat healthy food. Thank you for watching and I'll be back to you next week with more news.